What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS3 tutorial. So in this tutorial, we're gonna be looking at connecting online, going on PSN on our jailbroken PS3 so you can play your favorite games online. Now, first thing to note about this is that you do not need to connect to PSN if you're just trying to download game updates. You can download game updates without being signed into PSN. You just need to be connected to the internet on an offline account and not be signed into PSN and if you run the game you'll be able to just download the game updates from Sony servers. It's completely safe, it won't get you banned um, because you don't have to be signed into PSN to do that. And as for using media streaming apps, if you're wanting to go online to use Netflix or YouTube or Hulu or any of those kind of apps, then again you don't need to use PSN for that either because there are no PSN versions of those apps. I've, I'll link to a post here on PSX Lace that has a bunch of them. And these apps have the PSN authentication stripped from them, so you do not need to sign into PSN to use them. You still need an internet connection on your PS3, you need to be on an offline account, um, but be connected to the internet and you'll be able to use Netflix and Hulu using these non-PSN versions. So yeah, you don't need to connect to PSN if that's all you're trying to do. But if you want to actually go online with your games and play online or mod your games online, then you are going to need to connect to PSN. And that does present a ban risk. There's always a chance that you will get banned. It's pretty much inevitable. You will be banned eventually. It's just how long will it take until you get banned? You know, it might take a few months, but eventually you will get banned at some point. So, you know, it's a good idea not to use a PSN account on your jailbroken PS3 that's, you know, one that you use on your PS4 or one that you um, have lots of purchases on or you've been building up a big amount of trophies or whatever, uh, don't use your main PSN account. Use a throwaway account if you're going to be using uh, PSN online on your jailbroken PS3. So there's kind of two approaches to going online. You can either throw caution to the wind and just sign in on PSN and just use the console as you would normally, you know, load your games using Webman Mod and you know, mod your games, do whatever you want, and you'll probably still last a good few months before you eventually get banned. Or you can go with the cautious approach and download some apps that can spoof your console IDs, and it will also uh, disable custom firmware, uh, sy system calls and stuff like that, to make the console appear as though it's not jailbroken when you're online. Um, and a few other things like not running homebrew, because running homebrew while you're online can get you banned faster. Um, and stuff like that and also you know mounting your games while you're online as well and switching di between different games while you're online um, is also something that can get you banned faster so we can take these extra precautions that will hopefully make it so that you don't get banned as quickly as you would otherwise so rather than three months maybe you'll last six or nine months before you get banned but who knows it's kind of random so so what we're going to do is we're going to take the cautious approach. So we're going to go on to store.brewology.com. I'll link it in the description. And we're going to search for PSN. And you want to download PSN patch. As you can see here, it says it spoofs the console ID and disables the custom firmware system calls in order to make your system more safe to go on PSN. But obviously, you know, it doesn't mean it is 100% safe, obviously. Uh, so we're going to download this and then you can also optionally download Sen Enabler and it has a lot of the same functions as PSN Patch, although I would recommend using PSN Patch because it's faster. Uh, Sen Enabler takes longer to load up and, and to actually um, spoof all the information takes longer. Um, but the reason you might want Sen Enabler is that if you're not on 4.84, which is the required firmware version that you have to be on in order to um, go online on your jailbroken PS3, then if you're on a lower firmware like 4.82, then what you'll have to do is either you know update to a custom firmware that's a 4.84 custom firmware, or you can use Sen Enabler to spoof your firmware version to 4.84, and that way you can go online because PSN will think you're on 4.84 when you're actually on 4.82, you're just spoofing to 4.84 so you appear as though you are on that firmware. So you can go ahead and download that as well. So I've got both of them here downloaded. And then on the PS3, we can go to settings, go to our system settings and go down to uh, system information and check your IP address. Make sure you have a valid IP address and also that you are on 4.84 as you can see i am and then what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the computer we're going to run an ftp client like winscp or filezilla 
put into the host box the IP address of your PS3, put in 21 as the port number, click connect and wait a few seconds for it to retrieve the directory listing. Then we're gonna go into dev hdd0, we're gonna go into packages and then we're gonna take the two package files we downloaded for sen enabler and psn patch and we're gonna copy them into the packages directory. Okay, and then on the PS3, we're gonna go to game. We're gonna go down to the package manager. We're gonna install package files, PS3 system storage. You can also put the package files on the root of a USB drive and then go to standard, um, but we installed it to the hard drive. So we're gonna go to PS3 system storage and install Sen enabler and PSN patch. So that's that installed, PSN patch. Okay, there we go. Now we have them both installed. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is make a new account. So you want a different account. Personally, you don't have to do this technically, but I like to have a separate account that I'm going to use for um, online versus uh, an account I use when I'm offline. So I'm going to create a new user account, modded online, and I'm going to use this account whenever I'm going to go online, and I'll just keep the other account whenever I'm not on PSN. So now for going online, obviously run PSN patch first if you're going to you know, create an account on the PlayStation itself. But I would recommend creating an account on PlayStation.com. So go to PlayStation.com and then select the sign in button. And then from here, just click create new account and go through the process. I'm not going to walk you through that process because you should know how to sign up to a website. So just create an account on PlayStation.com and make sure you can sign in on playstation.com and then we're just going to download that account on the playstation in terms of all the different precautions that we're going to take here so first of all if your firmware version is less than 4.84 if you're not on 4.84 then it will not allow you to uh, connect to psn so you'll have to spoof your firmware version using sen enabler so let me go through that real quick so if we run sen enabler here okay so once you're on sen enabler you're going to click ok and then you're going to go to send slash PSN options and then select custom spoof. And then if you go down to version, just to make sure that you know you are on the latest version of send enabler, if you press left on the D-pad, it should say 4.84 as that is the latest firmware version that you can spoof to. And that is the firmware version you need to be on to connect to PSN. So you can go back to automatic and that will set it to 4.84 and then just press X on custom spoof and that will spoof your firmware version to 4.84. And then once it's done, you can reboot your PS3 and you'll be spoofed on 4.84. Um, I'm not gonna do this obviously, cause I'm already on 4.84, so I don't have to spoof um, my firmware version. So I'm just gonna go ahead and exit. So once you're on 4.84, and again, you can check by going to settings, system settings, and then system information. And as long as it says version 4.84, then you are good to go. So what we're going to do now is get set up here for running a game online. So the safest way to do this is, like I said, you don't want to mount your games while you're connected to PSN because that can get you banned faster. And you don't want to load any homebrew while you're connected to PSN either because that can also get you banned faster. So what the plan is basically is to load the game first of all before you actually connect to PSN or before you run PSN patch because PSN patch um, kind of disables your custom firmware so you won't be able to run homebrew um, or mount any of your games after you run PSN patch so you have to do this all beforehand so you can mount your game from webman games now if you remember from my previous episodes whenever I try and mount a game from uh, webman games it just automatically runs the game straight away and and that's because i have auto disk start enabled so you can change that by going into the system settings and then looking for disk auto start and make sure that's turned off and then your games will not automatically launch once you load them in webman so we're going to go into webman games and i'm going to load a game here I'm just, yeah i'm just going to do call of duty 4 modern warfare as an example i know it's a really old game there's probably nobody actually playing that online anymore but um it's just an example it's just a game i have installed so we're just going to use this one okay so now the game is mounted but we're not going to run it yet so what we're going to do now is we're going to run psn patch 
Okay, and then you get this menu popping up. Obviously, I have to blur out all my console IDs and stuff. Um, but yeah, you'll get this menu pops up and you're going to press X, which will spoof all three things. It will do IDPS, PSID and disable the custom firmware. So you're going to hold down the X button until you hear a beep on your PS3 and the screen should go black and it will boot you back to the XMB. Okay, so after you run PSM patch, you'll notice if you try and launch something like, uh, you know, a homebrew app, you'll just get an error just like you would if you tried to launch it on like original firmware. You can't run homebrew anymore, but these effects are only temporary. When you restart your PS3, it'll go back to normal. You'll be able to run your homebrew and stuff. And then if you want to go online again, just run PSM patch and uh, then go online. So yeah, we can't run homebrew now um, or mount our games, but our game's already mounted. So that's not a problem. Also, we still have webman mod running in the background. So you may also want to disable that as well before you go online. Um, there is a button combination that can unload webman mod for you. Um, all you have to do is hold down L3 and R3 and R2 at the same time. So hold all three buttons down at the same time and wait for it to say webman unloaded and that's webman gone as well. So now you're super ready to go online. So we're going to go onto PlayStation Network and sign up. And we're going to use an existing account, the one we created on PlayStation.com. Uh, and then when it says proceed to PlayStation Store, just go back. Do not go into the PlayStation Store. That's another one that's kind of... Some people say going to, the, going to the PlayStation Store can get you banned. Others seem to think it's okay. I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't risk it, so I'm just going to press circle and go back. And now we are basically ready. Now there's two ways we can do this. We can sign in now and then just launch the game. And for most games, that's fine. That'll work. Um, but some of the Call of Duty games are a bit weird. And also, if you're running any SPRX mod menus for the Call of Duty games, a lot of them will freeze the game if you run the game while you're connected to PSN. So, so with Call of Duty games especially, it's better to run the game before you sign in. So if we, and then sign in once you're actually on the game. So I'm going to run Modern Warfare here. We're not signed in yet. So I'm going to run Modern Warfare. Okay, so now we're on the multiplayer menu here. So what we do is we just go to play online and then we sign in. And now we're signing in to PlayStation Network. And there we go, we're online. And uh, can I try and find a match? I know there's probably nobody. Oh, wow, there's a few people. Well, there you go. So yeah, as you can see, guys, it clearly works there. We are online. So that is how you get online with your Jailbroken PS3. Okay, a couple of other things I should mention here. Uh, with your games, if you run your game after running PSM patch and it just black screens or it freezes, then you're probably running the extracted version. And the best thing to do in that scenario is just... Go on multi, obviously, you know, restart your PS3 so you're not connected to PSN anymore and you're able to run your homebrew. And then go on multi-man and um, press triangle on the game and select the option to create ISO, which will create an ISO version of the game. And then launch that instead and that should work with PSN patch. Um, for some reason, you know, the extracted game files versions often have problems like that with PSN patch. So you may have to run the ISO version instead. So another thing to note with Call of Duty games, if you're installing DLC for the game, make sure you also install the DLC fix. That's important. If you don't install the DLC fix, then you'll run into issues trying to use the DLC online particularly. Um, and for games like uh, Black Ops 2, Ghosts and Advanced Warfare, um, they have their own inbuilt banning systems built into them in their, their eboot file um, can detect if you're you know, if your console is jailbroken and looks for homebrew and a bunch of other stuff. So, um, yeah, you'll get banned pretty quickly if you go on one of those games, but you can get an anti-ban eboot.bin to replace your original eboot.bin with, which has those security checks removed so that you won't get banned when you go on, you know, Black Ops 2, Ghost or Advanced Warfare. All the other COD games, I think, are fine. Black Ops 3 probably has a ban system similar, I'm not sure, um, but... You know, any game before Black Ops 2 um, doesn't have any in-game banning system, so you should be fine. And when I say you'll get banned, I'm talking about being banned from that game specifically on your account. Um, it doesn't ban your console 
or it doesn't ban your account completely, it just bans um, your account from playing that specific game online. Um, but that could also contribute to getting your console banned faster, potentially. So if you're going to go on Black Ops 2, Ghosts or Advanced Warfare, make sure you have an anti-ban eboot. We'll be covering anti-ban eboots and stuff in the next episode, because the next episode is about installing um, mod menus for the Call of Duty games. And a lot of the, you know, SPRX menus and stuff for the newer CODs already have the anti-ban uh, built in there with the menu. Uh, with the eboot so that's uh, pretty handy so let so the last thing we're going to look at is what happens when you actually do get banned and you have to unban yourself okay so what can you do sometime in the future when you do eventually get banned and you try and connect to psn and it says that you are you know console banned or you try and you know find a game and you're console banned what do you do so first of all i'm back on my normal offline account i've restarted the ps3 so i can run homebrew and everything so I'm going to go back into Webman Games, Webman Setup, and you can do this either by launching the Webman Setup and do this on the PS3 itself, or you can do this on the computer, which I'd recommend because it'll be easier to do it on the computer, by going to the IP address of your PS3 on the computer. So put in the IP address into your web browser, into the URL bar, and that'll open up webman mod and then if you go to setup and if we go to the idps and mem setup and click the sunglasses to reveal the uh, the ids that are in here so you've got an idps and a psid now the psid normally is not that particularly important you can just leave it as is but when you get console banned it's the idps that sony bans essentially so it's this key this 32 character key right here so 16 characters another 16 characters so you've got this 32 digit code that gets banned and that bans your console so what you can do is you can just get another idps from a console that isn't banned and then replace your idps with that console's idps and then you're unbanned and you can go back online so to get these ids you can go to places like console crunch um, and you know other websites that other forums that post console IDs apparently people sell them on eBay as well apparently so these are free console IDs that you can use that anyone can use if you have an account on the form but of course those are being shared with multiple people so there's lots of people using the same console ID so that's going to get it banned much much faster so you know if you use a free console ID you might be you know if you're lucky and you get to it in time you might be able to use it for a little while but then you'll get banned pretty quickly but as you can see here there's also like a sticky of some someone selling uh, private console IDs. So a private console ID is really what you want. That means you're the only person who's going to be using that console ID. It's not going to be shared with anybody else. Now, you have to take these things with a grain of salt because it's possible that this person might, you know, resell the same console ID to two or three people to triple their, his profits. Who knows? Um, but yeah, you, you have to kind of take these things with a grain of salt, although people would probably be calling them out if they were getting banned super fast from the CIDs that he was selling so that's a disincentive for him to double cross people so yeah you kind of have to weigh up your options but 20 US dollars for a supposedly private CID is pretty decent you can get them for like 20 it could be anything from like 20 to 40 uh, dollars for a private uh, console ID but if it is truly private then you know you'll be able to stay online for months and months and months and months potentially um, if you're, you know, taking the precautions of using a PSN patch and not running homebrew while you're online and stuff like that, then yeah. So if you do get banned, you can purchase a console ID. Um, just as an example, if I just grab one of the console IDs and then open up a notepad document and stick this in here. So as you can see, the key is a big, long 32 character key, but it's separated into two different sections on Webman. So if I just grab my current one here, I'll put that in at the top then we can split it there into two different sections so then what you want to do is just copy the first 16 digits uh, tick the IDPS box and then paste it in uh, your new console ID paste that in and then of course the other 16 digit section you're gonna paste into the second box and then just make sure you click save you got to make sure you do tick that IDPS box because otherwise it will just use It'll keep using the normal console ID from that console. Whereas if you tick the box, it will use the 
new console ID that you've put into those two boxes. So make sure you have that box ticked and then click save. And that's it. Then you'll have to click here to restart your PS3. You'll have to restart it in order for that to be applied. And that's it. Now, when you boot back up, you'll be on that new console ID. Sometimes the console ID sellers will also give you a new PS ID to go with it. So swap out both of them, the ID PS and the PS ID in that case. But if the seller just gives you the console ID on its own, then just leave your PS ID as is and swap out the console ID on its own. And then you can go back online. Obviously, when you get console banned, you typically get account banned as well. So you'll have to create a new account. Even if you don't get account banned, it's not wise to use the same account that you got console banned on, um, on a new console ID, because you're likely to get banned again faster. So when you apply a new console ID to go back online, create a brand new PlayStation account. So it's a fresh account and you should be good. So yeah, that's basically it. That's uh, all the kind of do's and don'ts of going online with your jailbroken PS3. Um, so stay tuned for the next video where we're going to be covering um, mod menus. We're going to be looking at installing mod menus on the Call of Duty games. Um, we'll be covering a bunch of other things as well. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys in the next video.